Prepare yourselves, it's Big News Wednesday. Yes, indeed, another Big News Wednesday with a big overworked co-host, JR Jackson, <laughs> fresh off the watch list. How's it going, JR? Yeah, I figure I have didn't have enough to say in the hour that I had, so I wanna go and say some more things here. Well, I, I I hope that you didn't cover a lot of sports news on your show because we packed ours full of sports stuff. I have voids. What are sports? Uh, I, I like to talk about uh, mega rays and uh, dimensions and black holes. Is that? Oddly the- enough, that is what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> so apparently you've seen the rundown. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, by the way, I saw a suggestion from Galfar that Big News Wednesdays should be uh, Dr. Richie on your show, you on my show, and then me on Dr. Richie's show. And I think that's good, but we can go deeper. No, come on, we got at least also the Young Turks. Like, let's have <laughs> Anna on your show, and then actually, I do end up on her show. So yeah, on Wednesdays, I think we can do this thing. We can make it happen. Um, anyway. And after all those shows, then the the next show is just us uh, sleeping. Yeah, no, the next show is called Burnout. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes, uh, so with that, we do have a lot that we're gonna be talking about. Thank you for tuning in on today's show. We're gonna be starting things off in a bit of a random way. I feel the need to do this on Wednesdays to give JR just a little bit of like a cushion cuz he's doing you know the full hour of the watch list to immediately jump into like the newest reports on the January 6th commission hearings. No, we oh, can't yeah. do that, so we're gonna have something fun in a little bit. Okay. Then we're gonna dive into a whole bunch of ways that right wingers are trying to make sure that we have as many mass shootings as possible. That's fun. And a whole lot more besides. Rudy Giuliani, Lindsey Graham could be in some trouble. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and uh, let's see, what do, um, will there be schools in Florida? We'll find out. Uh, do any Republicans read bills before they pass them? We'll find <laughs> out about that and a lot as well. So in advance of that, if you would mind hitting the like button. And sharing the stream so the people know we're live, that would be a delight. And if you want to send us any comments, sweet super chats, all that, we'll respond as we go. But with all that said, JR, are you ready to start the show? Uh, I mean, no, since you're starting off so kindly to avoid all the craziness, yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. Well, then in that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna intro us into our first topic. Uh, celebrations need to end. No more celebrating things, people. You're not responsible enough. And I have at least two pieces of evidence towards that. First, some coming out of the the 4th of July that just happened. Take a look at this. Oh, it's gonna be right. You cannot stick it in the ground, it's not gonna work. Who did that? You gotta put it in the shoe. America, <laughs> America. I don't remember the rest of the song, but you know how it goes in America. We love to blow each other up. Uh, the amazing thing about that, JR, is that the first thing that happens when it like looks like it shoots a shotgun of fireworks at them, that seemed like the disaster. That was just a teaser. That was an mm. amuse bouche of devastation. <laughs> there was so much more coming. And there's actually one more level to this of how crazy this is. But first, like we live in LA, it's like peak fireworks here. <laughs> I, I went on, uh, on my front porch, and literally anywhere you look in every direction are fireworks for about eight hours straight. My dog is uh, permanently traumatized, they'll never be the same. What is up with the fireworks? What yeah, is up it's, with us as a it's people? It's pretty bad. Uh, it's it's simulation of war, right? You know how you know obsessive we are with war, and then guns, and then we have loud noises, and oh, it might shoot at someone. Oh, it's dangerous. All these things just get us so excited because America. Loud noises <laughs> that sound like war. If that's not more American than anything else, I don't. Understand, I can't tell you what else is. Which, by the way, points out to what happened in Philly. I hate to bring it so um, seriously, real quick, but. I was thinking, I said, man, as fireworks are going off, there's no way people can tell what else is happening. It's horrible, but this is our regular regular a, a, a celebration um, in the country every year. And I know what you're talking about. You mentioned mm-hmm. LA, um, it's constant, it's constant. Literally, my kid has issues with it. He literally escapes on the 4th oh, every geez. year to some, some secluded area where they're not allowed. <laughs> and let's not forget how dry it is here, yet 
we have people like, even though this guy is not in LA, but people do those similar things. You hear sirens, fire trucks the entire yep. weekend because people are messing up, probably blowing off hands and starting fires. Yeah, hundred percent. And look, you know, not to get like even more serious, but eleven-year-old boy, he was hit by a fire. We're gonna die. And that's not These things unique. That hurt. happens. People get like, and and it happens in a very small percentage of cases. For the vast the vast majority of people who put off fireworks, it doesn't it doesn't kill anyone. It just you know like uh, makes us people can't sleep and gives dogs uh, psychological disorders and makes a big mess uh, and maybe starts some fires. Um, so for the most part, it ends up being okay. But and and <laughs> I like fireworks. Like I did go outside to watch the fireworks. I don't need to see them for eight hours. I don't need to take photos of them, which I agree is the weirdest thing a person could ever do. <laughs> um, it's just the sheer quantity for like weeks we do it. And at the end, like people do it during the day when you can't even see the colors. All they're doing is creating a loud noise. And like maybe if like it was a surprise, then that would be something. But you set the fire and then like 10 seconds later, boom, you're an adult. What are you doing? What what are you doing with your life? And then, oh. I gotta get more of that. Hold on. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I gotta do that again. What is wrong with us as a people? Seriously, that this is how we're celebrating. But anyway, I do want to get to the added layer of craziness. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened right before the video we just showed you? We're gonna play it, and it's a little bit hard to hear the voice. So really focus in. <clears throat> Someone predicted. Take a look. That's what happened. That's why they were shooting. They blew up under somebody's car, came in the garage. <laughs> yeah. The one was like, oh man, that's what happened. Someone had some bad fireworks and it blew up. It went under the car. It literally they said went under the car. And then so I, I hope that doesn't happen here. <laughs> like, you know the people around you. Do you really trust them? <laughs> to set off fireworks. I don't trust myself to set off fireworks. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like the sort of people who are super into fireworks are the last people you'd want to be handling explosives. It's sort of weird how that self-selection works, JR. Or well, if you've already seen this happen, how yeah. is it that you're gonna do a very similar thing which may get you that exact same result? Maybe move the car, maybe close the garage. Those things <laughs> that this lady predicted. Move um, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the first one shot off, and they were actually going to hang around until it really blew up. Now, uh, by yeah. the way, um, I'm sure everyone's thinking, go ask that lady what numbers to play today, because she is predicting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Listen to her in the future. Uh, finally, that was I said I had two pieces of evidence about celebrations and how we need to end them. Um, three fans were wounded at an Oakland A's game by celebratory mm. gunfire on the Fourth mm. of July. Yes. Three fans were struck by bullet fragments from what appears to be celebratory gunfire occurring throughout the city. A fourth person uh, who's also hurt went to the hospital on his or her own. All four will survive their wounds, so that's the good news. Um, but just in case, like, you know, if you're international or something, you don't understand what some of these words mean. Uh, celebratory gunfire is when you shoot your gun off because a sports team won something. And that's a thing that humans do. And I, just to, to put it in context, when I was growing up, I would watch Star Trek and they would have agreed, you know what? We should focus on science and exploration and curiosity. We move past money and then these petty just buying things, these petty things. And we're all just gonna work together to make humanity better. And I like turned to my parents and said, I hope that comes soon. <laughs> I was a dumb kid. <laughs> We shoot guns in the air and blow our families up. That's what we do. I had no idea you were Mickey Mouse as a kid, John. Exactly. I was Mark Zuckerberg. Oh boy! <laughs>And now we're gonna get serious. It turns <clears throat> out that a celebratory gunfire is not the only type of gunfire. We've got the the normal kind too. And right wingers are really interested in making sure that nothing has changed, that there are more shootings. So they've come up with a lot of BS excuses for what happened in Highland Park. Let's start off with the first. Look at Robert Bobby Cremo. Would you sell a gun to that guy? Does he seem like a nutcase? Of course he does. So why didn't anyone raise an alarm? Well. Maybe because he didn't stand out. Maybe because there are a lot of young men in America who suddenly look and act a lot like this guy. 
It's not an attack, it's just true. Like Cremo, they inhabit a solitary fantasy world of social media, porn, and video games. They're high on government-endorsed weed. Smoke some more, it's good for you. They're numbed by the endless psychotropic drugs that are handed out in every school in the country by crackpots posing as counselors. And of course, they're angry. They know that their lives will not be better than their parents. They'll be worse. That's all but guaranteed. They know that. They're not that stupid. And yet the authorities in their lives, mostly women, never stops lecturing them about their so-called privilege. You're male. You're privileged. Imagine that. Try to imagine an unhealthier, unhappier life than that. So a lot of young men in America are going nuts. Are you surprised? And by the way, a shockingly large number of them have been prescribed psychotropic drugs by their doctors, SSRIs or antidepressants. And that would include quite a few mass shooters. Okay, so uh, there's a lot to dig in there, uh, into there, and we will. Um, but just to be clear, uh, Tucker Carlson wants his almost entirely male audience, and the, the, the audience of many of these uh, fascist right wingers, uh, to be isolated and scared and ignorant and weak and incurious and terrified of diversity and to feel like cut off from everything. That's what they want. They don't want them to have positive relationships with women, to understand other cultures, to feel a connection to anything except to them. That's how you extract patronage from them. That's what they're doing. And then when some of those people inevitably go out and start killing people, uh, you perpetrating the violence that they've been taught to worship and celebrate by right wingers who take people like Kyle Rittenhouse and uh, George Zimmerman and make celebrities out of them that hold up people who they only know because they've killed people. They will then turn around and blame pick a thing, literally anything other than the terrible diet of right wing fascist media that they've consumed and then the guns that they have easy access to. So I don't know JR where we wanna start, that it's the <laughs> government mandated weed or it's the drugs or it's the porn or in this case, the ama most amazing thing is um, when it's only men that do this, only men. Obviously, who's gotta be responsible? Women. Women, of so course. So he made <laughs> this about women are responsible for crimes that women never commit. That is actually a master stroke there from Dr. <laughs> is Carlson. it 1952? I'm not sure. They like to go back in time and, and regress all the time to mention, you know, it's just those women that are always nagging. Hey, Helen, I just want to get home from a full day's work and have some chicken on the table. What is this? What is this? Is this Archie Bunker? What is hmm. Again, he's not even speaking solely, yes, I'm sure majorly to 80 year old guys. But there's younger folks who watch this and somehow think this is a cool reality. Or this is their outlet, this is their speaker, this is a person that gives them any kind of reason to continue down this path of violence and anger at no one because you suck. So it's women's fault. Now, by the way, there's a couple of things he mentioned there. He said, why didn't anyone raise an alarm? Because mm -hmm. since we're gonna talk about raising alarms and trying to prevent these types of things, uh, there's all these uh, proposals for red flag laws. This guy named John Corn, he's a Republican. He was put on this bipartisan gun legislation committee by Mitch McConnell. And he went in front of uh, uh, the, the Republicans in Texas, got booed constantly. Yep. And they were screaming, no red flags, no red flags. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of these people will also watch Tucker Carlson because apparently this guy was a red flag and you didn't want, and you're trying to figure why no one said anything. It's because your party doesn't want anything said about people like this. Yeah. Number two, Tucker also said, there's so many men that look and act like this guy. We're also trying to tell you guys that there's so many people that look and act like this guy. Maybe we should start paying attention to people who look and act like this guy because they're the ones that are perpetrating all of the mass shootings and all of the terrorism, domestic homegrown terrorism in the country. These are the guys, but you want to ignore yeah. that too. Because if we pay attention to those two things, you won't have as many of these shootings. And therefore, you don't have a show, Tucker Carlson. This sure. is your audience. Yeah, and, and also, and like, I don't know, maybe, maybe conserv uh, conservatives watching this and you're like, no, no, it really is about mental illness. And yeah, we should be on the lookout for people like this. All of them are focusing on this guy's appearance. Look at him. Isn't he crazy? Who would sell this guy a gun? Well, first of all, uh, gun stores will sell him a gun. They don't care. Every gun that's used in a mass shooting started at a gun store. Did those people stop selling guns afterward out of some sort of great feelings of shame or guilt? No, in fact, they, they, they tracked down the one in this particular one. Uh, the dude bought uh, the gun online, picked it up from local gun dealer Red Dot Arms. The guy says, we meticulously do the paperwork. That's our job, that's what we do to track. He's, he's not worried about it. He said he was concerned about one thing about Cremo. He found one thing to be suspicious. He said most of these people doing these things are pretty stupid. 
Somebody that I would have put a thought into this would have grinded the serial number and we would have never found him. <sighs> so you get what his concern is. It isn't that he <sighs> was part of a transaction that resulted in a gun you being used to kill a bunch of people. It's why didn't he make the gun untraceable? Why didn't he hide the the the, the trail a little bit? Anyway, they sell AR-15s, AK-47s, other rifles starting at about $300, actually cheaper than I thought you could get them for. So really cheap, you can kill a bunch of people for not much money. They also sell merchandise glorifying armed militias like the three percenters using slogans that mean come and take it. You know, this other sort of stuff that gets people to feel constantly under threat, victimized. You need a gun, you need to defend your gun, you need to defend everything. They're coming for you, they're gonna take it. What are you gonna do about it? But who would sell a gun to a crazy like this? Oh, I don't know, someone who wanted to make $300 apparently. And by the way, follow up question for Tucker Carlson and all of the people who say it's about mental illness. We should be watching out for these people. Okay, so um, when we find them, what should we do? Should we take their gun? No, think about that. We should find out who it is and then do nothing. Nothing that would stop them from buying the gun. And by the way, even if they did support red flag laws or anything like that to stop these people, even if they supported background checks, which most of them don't. Think about that as a system. Terrible things are happening, so we need a net that's gonna catch some of the people who wanna do it. <laughs> but if the net fails, they should be able to buy the gun and they should be able to do the crime. They will never say that. They'll never have the bravery to admit that that's the natural consequence of their plan. But that is what it is. Let's have a net that I pretend I support, but I don't really. And if the net ever fails, they should 100% be able to buy deadly weapons and kill a bunch of people. And that should be able to happen constantly. What a plan. That's what he wants. And he'll blame stuff like the weed and the porn. You know, I did an interview with, uh, with journalist Aurora Snow that'll be up on the channel soon, or or it's women pressuring men that do it, or it's that they know their their lives won't be as good as their parents, which by the way is true. And we as progressives fight to not make that an inevitability. Tucker Carlson supports policies that ensure that their lives will be worse than their parents. So he is again supporting in rhetoric and substance, creating more Bobby Criminos or whatever while pretending to have a problem with it. Everything that he said there was so fundamentally false, designed to shroud his own culpability in this, the culpability of the movement that he's an enthusiastic leader in. It's disgusting. But at the same time, pushing it forward after all said and done, how disgusted he is. And look at this guy. That's what he's still pushing in that same rhetoric mm -hmm. for it to but happen. This again. guy's this guy's a weirdo. He like who does he think that he and Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro are trying to produce? Happy, satisfied people who aren't like constantly obsessed with other people's lives and trying to stop them from living their life. And they create creepy little weirdos. That's what they, they try to find the creepy little weirdos. They try to snare the creepy little weirdos. And then they try to ensure that they never get better. Because happy, satisfied, curious, compassionate people wouldn't listen to five seconds of their programming. They need these people to be broken so they can continue to be rich. And with that said, we're not gonna do the Laura Ingram video. So in one second, why don't we jump ahead whenever you're ready to the, the third video in this block. Two shootings on July 4th, one in a rich white neighborhood and the other at a fireworks display. It almost sounds like it's designed to persuade Republicans to go along with more gun control. I mean, after all, remember, we didn't see that happen at all the pride parades in the month of June. But as soon as we hit MAGA month, as soon as we hit the month that we're all celebrating, loving our country, we have shootings on July 4th. I mean, that's, oh, you know. That would sound like a conspiracy theory, right? Of course. But what's the definition of a right-wing conspiracy theory? Well, by the way, it's the news that's just six months early. Yeah, you know how like a year and a half ago you found out that the Jewish space lasers did exist? <laughs> and all, all of her insane, I'm gonna, I'm so close to swearing in like five different ways right now. <laughs> ES arguments, Oh, they all turned out to be true six months later. So to be clear, that is a technical congresswoman who is saying that the shooting in Highland Park was a false flag. Oh, she's not saying it, she's just right on maybe I'm asking questions. I mean, it's just weird that I think every single inconvenient shooting is a false flag. And I do mean everyone. I mean, look, she, she pushed conspiracy theories about Uvalde saying that he was a, 
uh, wearing eyeliner and he was a cross dresser and stuff like this. And she doesn't care that it doesn't end up being true six months later or whenever. Uh, she said that the Mandalay Bay shooting was a false flag because it targeted uh, a country music thing. Oh, She also believed that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, that shooting was a false flag. That was planned as well. She believes. Whatever she needs to believe to think that guns are fine and nothing bad could possibly happen. And no one would ever target a red state for this sort of stuff. No, those shootings all happen. And I'm I'm sorry for her that it's inconvenient, apparently, that nobody gunned down pride parade goers. She seems so desperate for that to have happened. Um, but I got news for you. During Pride Month, there were shootings all over the place. <laughs> it ain't just at country music festivals and fourth of July events. They shoot up schools and they shoot up shoot up churches and they shoot up airports and they shoot up concerts and they shoot up malls and they shoot up every place because it's America and we've made it easy to get a gun and shoot up whatever place you have some sort of weird obsession with. So JR, it's just it's just another false flag. It just everything is exactly the way it needs to be. If there's no manifesto, then we can't support it. If there is a manifesto and he's a right wing, then it was probably planted by the FBI. <laughs> it, it's all coming up, Margie. It's whatever it needs to be for the her. fact that you have all of the normal answers that they go with this. It means that this is a, a constant uh, cycle back and forth with these same excuses and the same pushback. Once you, if you have a certain scenario, it's set, and this is the response from right wing conservatives anytime to push that excuse further and further away. Now, by the way, every time there's these false flags, every one of these is false flags that's conducted by Antifa and the libs. Conservatives need to make up their minds. Because what I always hear from conservatives, especially when it comes to violence and guns and fighting, conservatives are, 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 are gritty. They've got a stone jaw. They know how to handle a firearm. That's not a gun. You call that a rifle? That's not an automatic weapon. Learn about your guns because they're the guns. They're, they're, they're the gun nuts. They're the ones who know about this stuff. Don't talk about it unless you know. Hey, when this civil war breaks out, we're going to kick your ass because you libs don't know how to fight. So yeah. do the libs not know how to fight? Are they weak kneed and limp wristed like they like to say? Or are they carrying out these false flags where there's firing into crowds and killing people? Either these libs are good at shooting or these libs suck at shooting. Either these yeah. libs are violent or these libs are weak kneed. Which one is it? It always yeah. changes based off of their cool. argument. So suddenly once it happens again, and it's these same types of folks that shoot up a crowd, suddenly it's the libs. Mm -hmm. Oh, But then again, those libs suck at this, which yeah. one? Is it? Yeah, well, look, it's simultaneous. It's been true in every fascist movement throughout history that the enemies, both internal and external, are always simultaneously too strong to imagine, which makes you a victim conveniently, mm -hmm. and so weak that it makes you superior and your win is inevitable and all that. That's true in all of these cases, whether it's Antifa or you know whether it's the libs or whatever. Um, look, they're they're big anti Semites. They 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 would mock Jewish people. They also believe that Jewish people control literally everything. It's always simultaneously too yeah. weak and too strong. Um, yeah, just she. It's if they shoot if they shoot up a thing that she thinks is right wing, and I don't know how the Fourth of July parade is now right wing. I don't know. It's it's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, then that's obviously a false flag because they've attacked a conservative thing, which means wait a second, I'm doing the mental math here. If they had shut up a pride parade, well, then she would just break down. She wouldn't have anything to say. She would have to accept finally that it is real. It is really, oh, wait, no. She would just say that they targeted a lib thing to get libs fired up for gun control. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. She would actually work that out really easily. It doesn't matter where they shoot, it doesn't matter who they shoot, it doesn't matter how many people they shoot. They're going to have a stock response designed to do one thing have nothing happen. Have nothing stop it from happening again. We have probably, JR, me and you probably on a Wednesday show have delivered exactly what we've, we're saying right now before in any number of shootings. And I mm -hmm. guarantee we'll do it again because they're gonna stop anything from happening. Too many centrist Dems are gonna go along with it and nothing is gonna fundamentally change. That's we the unfortunately, plan. <laughs> that's the plan. The plan's working fine. It's, you know, a lot of people die along the way, but other than that, plan's working fine. Um, we need to take our first break uh, so that Sophie doesn't lose her absolute mind. And uh, when we come back, though, we do have more videos, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. And quite frankly, to me, I've seen this type before. He looks a little Antifa-ish, doesn't he? All right, law enforcement, they're trying to do their best, I assume. Are they explaining away things? You know, he was caught wearing women's clothing. 
Here's how the police put it. During the attack, Primo was dressed in woman's clothing, and investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity and help him during the escape uh, with the other people who were fleeing the chaos. Or maybe, like uh, leftists all over the place, he liked wearing women's clothes even though he's a he. Uh, by the way, he identifies, at least in some social media postings, as a liberal. All right, I am a liberal. Now, is this, look, he's crazy if he did this, all right? This is a horribly deranged person. Um, but I do notice they're not talking about motivations here. They do, however, whenever it seems that the shooter might at some point voted for a Republican, right? Okay, so we had to engage <laughs> with this because you gotta appreciate that dude, the like, like third tier clone of Sean Hannity saying, he identified as a liberal once. And look at the liberal media. They won't admit it when there's a political motivation potentially. You notice he didn't show the guy wearing the Trump flag or at the Trump rally. It's weird that that slipped his mind and he left it out. Now, interestingly, yesterday when we talked about this guy, what did we do? We identified the Trump flag in the Trump rally. We also said that he liked the Joe Biden video at some point. And so it was difficult to say with any certainty what his political motivations are. But they they made it a little bit purer and cleaner for the Newsmax audience there. But that was just a little thing at the end. They also did, JR, I don't know if you know, on the show, I predicted that they were going to take that thing where he put on a female disguise to hide himself as he fled his mass shooting and pretend that he was trans or a transvestite or God only knows what. And that is indeed what they've done. Except that they went wider than that. They said that this is a thing that leftists do. Leftists just dress up in women's clothing or something. That's a, <laughs> a trend, I don't know. So Sophie's a leftist, that's true. She does wear women's clothing quite often. <laughs> um, but anyway, that they found the thing to focus on. There's always going to be some little thing, JR, to focus on to excuse the fact that even someone who gives off as many warning signs as any human possibly could can walk into a store, get a weapon of war, and then go and kill as many people as he wants. That's a major problem that needs to be solved, but we can't focus on that because he was wearing a skirt or something. So let's talk about that for the next week. What do you think? Um, so <clears throat> there was one point about that whole thing that Greg Kelly just went through that really stuck out because he went to these, let's go to the police officer to talk about how he dressed up in women's clothing to get away from the scene. And the police officer, who you would think if you're gonna go to a police officer who's talking about what happened on the scene, that you're going him for the real information. You go into him for the story. You go into him for the details that we should believe. I mean, he's a trustworthy man in blue. Goes to the police officer. The police officer says he dressed up in women's clothing so he could escape and cover up his tattoos and not be identified for who he was. He mm. said that in the video that Greg Kelly went to, came back from the video and said, or maybe it's because he's a lib and he's a cross dresser. That's what you got from the store from the video you went to. Yeah, to give us information, and you came back and opposed your own video. That's amazing. Again, you send amazing. this signal that hey, we just went to an official uh, video of what happened. Yet I'm gonna uh, reshape what you just saw, but not enough people huh? paid attention to realize that that's what he did. It's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. I'm not sure it's that he watched simple, that. It's a simple <laughs> switch. It's not exactly. even a switch. You would think. It's just come back and disagreeing with the video you just said to listen to. That's all that happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, no, the, the cop is wrong. Uh, he he put it. He basically did what like the guy did in the third Lord of the Rings prequel, the Hobbit movie or whatever. Oh no, I think that's an identity thing, and I think that that's definitely okay. Again, you're identifying all these people that you think are so crazy. Why aren't we taking them seriously, Greg Kelly? What would you like to do? What would you like to do to take them seriously? Would you like to stop them from buying guns? I think that seems very reasonable. Would you like to do that? No, you don't want to do that. You I don't was thinking the same thing. Hey, okay, he's a lib that that's a total a Biden supporter, man. He hates MAGA. And he got yeah. this gun, multiple guns in his hands, and he started firing on innocent people. Take his guns away too. Yeah, it's take, pretty take weird how they think that I just want to take <laughs> conservative guns away. No, anybody who yeah. has these guns should not have these guns. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's just absolute BS. Um, I I don't know if it's just a knee-jerk thing. I don't generally try to be knee-jerk. I want to start wearing women's clothing just to bother them because it really does seem to bother them. <laughs> Who cares what anybody wears? Who cares what anybody wears, especially people that you it's don't amazing. know? Who cares? As people are saying in the chat, did Rudy Giuliani become a leftist when he put on a woman's dress? 
to make out with Donald Trump? Did Madison Cawthorn become a leftist when he was wearing the lingerie? Wear whatever you want, who the hell cares? Do you know the main reason that more men don't wear women's clothing? Cuz they couldn't pull it off. You have to like expose your arms and your back and your calves and all that stuff. And most guys just don't have the back arms or calves <laughs> to pull it off. That's let's keep it real. <laughs> most guys couldn't wear women's clothes. Women's clothes, you know what they are? Interesting. There's a lot more variety. I, you know what? I bet it would really frustrate them if we started doing it. Considering <laughs> Anyway, with that said, we do have one more crazy person to talk to, to talk about. Let's jump at this last video. I rise in opposition to HR 2377. I have five grandchildren. I would do anything, anything to protect my five grandchildren, including as a last resort, shooting them if I had to, to protect the lives of my grandchildren. Democrat bills that we've heard this week want to take away my right, my right to protect my grandchildren. They want to take away the rights of law-abiding citizens to protect their own children and grandchildren and wives and brothers and sisters. This bill takes away due process from law-abiding citizens. Can you imagine if you had a disgruntled ex or somebody who hates you because of your political views, and they go to a judge and say, oh, this person is dangerous. And that judge would take away your guns, lean on the side of conservatism, take away the guns, without that person even having a, a knowledge that there was a court hearing that would take away their guns. This is wrong. Okay, so I, I feel this knee jerk need to try to extend understanding to people who've provided no explanation for why they deserve it. That's Debbie Lesko. And uh, if you think you heard her say that she would be willing to shoot her own grandkids to protect <laughs> them, yeah, that's what she said. I'm assuming that's not what she means, JR, because <laughs> she did seem to imply that she has a constitutional right to murder her kids and grandkids. Like she goes on to say that it would be unfair to take away people's guns for something they say or do. But I come out of that video thinking, I don't think she should have any guns, or at the very least, she shouldn't have guns and be around her grandkids at the same time. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out anytime. I mean, maybe, you know, obviously she's probably not advocating to shoot her grandchildren. That's something that many times happens to people on accident when they have guns around their houses, yep, leaving exactly. them out because they're irresponsible. Um, so I'm always looking for what is it that she was trying to say? What is it that she could have said instead of shoot them? What word was supposed to be in place of shoot them? Maybe I can't she means like shoot someone else to protect them, but there was I think multiple words missing. I don't know if like her brain <laughs> shut down or something. She's a Republican. It could be one of the inevitable consequences of long COVID that does create a bit of a brain fog. <laughs> but but anyway, yeah. even if we extend that goodwill. Um, no, the, the red flag law still make again, we keep going back to this JR. They say don't take away, don't do anything about guns, but be on the watch for people who might be an issue. And then do what? Because you're saying don't take their guns. There should be no mechanism where you can go to a judge and say, this person has been like beating their wife, they're going to town on them. You've got to stop them from getting a gun. No, you can't do that, according to Debbie Lesko and others. No matter how much evidence you have, it is unacceptable to limit anyone's access to, to guns in general, to any particular guns, anything like that. So again, I asked them, what are we supposed to do? And I already know the answer, we're not supposed to do anything. We're just supposed to let people continue to be shot. It's weird because they're totally against these uh, people who openly and explicitly say, I wanna shoot. I'm planning on shooting the Buffalo terrorist that shot up that grocery store, was planning, was staking out the joint, told people about how they had these aspirations for killing people in the past. I think the Uvalde kid who shot up the school there, similar things. They talk about a lot. I think even this guy in Highland Park, his previous instances of them showing signs of wanting to do this and people seeing it and actually some, yeah. some level of authorities being called. And after that happens, we don't want anything else done. It's how dare they try to take someone's guns away just because they said they're looking to get a gun to kill a bunch of people. Why yeah. don't they want that to be stopped is the question you have to ask. But 
Um, many of these same folks would be in support of what went on in New York under Giuliani. I think it was Giuliani um, with stop and frisk laws. They yeah. targeted certain people for far fewer reasons, actual reasons, but just because hey, that guy looks like he's suspicious. This one internal thought process of police officers across the board saying, yeah, let's start uh, stop and frisk, frisking these minorities because you know what they always do. How are you in support of that? But you're in opposition to people seeing someone who explicitly said, I want to kill people. And let's make sure that they have a much tougher chance of doing that. Yeah, maybe 100%. it's the person that you're supporting Again, and not that. We, we, we feel this need to point out hypocrisy and all that, but they don't have consistency as a value. They don't care. It can be whatever it needs to be. Um, yeah, uh, don't let her have a gun though. Or at least don't let her unassist, like un, like supervised be around kids. There's something wrong with her. Anyway, uh, with that said, you know we're gonna jump to our second break. I did not realize we'd be talking about these videos for so long, but there's just so <laughs> much out there. Anyway, with that said, when we come back, we'll finally be getting to our headline story. Rudy Giuliani, Lindsey Graham, what's going on with them? We'll break it down after this. They might be coming for Rudy Giuliani and Lindsey Graham, or at least the subpoenas already are. Could there be consequences for two of the biggest Trumpers in the country? Well, we'll have to find out, but a special grand jury investigating Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election is now going to be talking to them. Court documents show that the Fulton County in Georgia, a special grand jury has issued subpoenas to Rudy Giuliani, Senator Lindsey Graham. They're also looking to talk to a number of other figures you're gonna remember from early seasons of this whole thing. John Eastman, the lawyer who's been in the news again recently. Cleta Mitchell, Kenneth Chesebro, Jenna Ellis as well. Uh, Mitchell participated in the phone call between Trump and Brad Raffensperger, which was raised again in the hearings uh, within the last couple of weeks. Um, that sparked the grand jury investigation originally. Now, what do there's a lot of people that they're going to be talking to, but obviously Rudy Giuliani and uh, Lindsey Graham are two of the the highest profile. Um, what do they think about this? Well, they're, they're not really saying. That doesn't mean they're not saying anything. I went to Giuliani's Twitter account to see if he was responding and. He's not saying anything, but he is retweeting tons of people who are defending him. And to give you an idea of how serious he is as an individual and the seriousness and intellectual rigor of those defending him, here are some of the things that he retweeted. Uh, anyone with a brain knows the January 6th committee is a bunch of poop. <laughs> That's Giuliani retweeted that. Okay, also this. Elf3 said, impeach Brandon and his VP Brandala. The process started with a 2000 page Army Afghanistan investigative report, and the 2021 immigration ICE report. I don't even know what conspiracy theories those are referencing. I can't keep up with all of it. I know it's probably something crazy. But yes, now Brandon has a VP, Brandala. And those are the people who are coming to Rudy Giuliani's defense. He's not saying anything about it. He is for once choosing not to incriminate himself. But he is retweeting those and Lindsey Graham really quiet about this too. Seems significant JR, but they don't have much to say. Uh, okay, so now we've got, now we've got um, subpoenas coming out for these folks because they've been involved and they put themselves out there. The Jenna Ellis all them of the world who like, we want attention. I'm not sure if Mike Lindell is in this anyway. They probably kept him from any information because it's Mike Lindell. But you put your face in front of cameras for this entire time, over a year. Talk about the stolen election, stolen election. We have this information and that information. I've got files stuffed into my room. Um, <laughs> as soon as the information comes out, I'm gonna prove it to you guys in court. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Hey, Donald yeah. Trump did these seven, eight, nine things that we can tell and we've seen and have been exposed and been on video and audio. So now you have to come in and talk. I'm not sure what the plan was. What was the plan? It's obvious that they have nothing, that they've had nothing and they still have nothing because the facts are just there. What was the end plan here? They expected no one to ever pay attention. They expected no one to ever look into the reality versus what they're saying and then go, so what part did you have in this whole thing? If you know what was happening, as we've seen even from some of these folks that are testifying now on the January 6th committee who were part of it, who at least stood there while it happened and said, this is crazy. Even at that point, did you say, what is my out? Did you really think that this was gonna pan out with absolutely no information, no concrete evidence? That then suddenly people go, oh yeah, we believe you now, Rudy. Yeah, Jenna, good job. You lost 18 times in court, <laughs> but we're just gonna go ahead and believe it now. What's the end game here? I can't figure it out. Yeah, I- uh, Now you've been subpoenaed, so now you gotta tell your full story. I don't know.
Yeah, exactly. You'd think they'd be so excited to finally present all the evidence that you alluded to there that they've been talking about for literally years. Um, probably not so much. So look, we, we know that Giuliani was involved with, with the legal effort and they just failed and failed and failed and occasionally melted on camera and failed and failed and <laughs> failed and that's what they did. But let's bear in mind, Lindsey Graham is also involved in this. Now bear in mind, this was big news when it was first revealed way back. I think this is even before January 6th. This has not been talked about much since that he separate from Trump called Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia at that point, called him twice in the weeks following the elections, quote, about reexamining certain absentee ballots cast in Georgia in order to, and I swear to God, this is what they said, explore the possibility of a more favorable outcome for former President Donald Trump. Graham previously denied wrongdoing. So not to identify any fraud that exists, but to find a more favorable outcome. And again, putting pressure on a election official in the state of Georgia to get them to change the results of an election is not just frowned upon Ross, it's illegal. You can't actually do that. Now he's a senator, so there's every reason to believe that he's gonna get away with it. But he did clearly and intentionally commit a crime in those calls with Brad Raffensperger. He's not alone in that, others did, including Trump. They all committed that crime as well as many others. But we're gonna see, maybe Georgia will end up doing what the DOJ, what you know, Merrick Garland and what seemingly every Democrat in DC won't do. Maybe they'll take the law seriously for once. Uh, probably not, <laughs> but again, Lindsey Graham is the guy who's already exhib exhibited and illustrated on Fox News how much he's willing to grovel to Donald Trump and whatever his whims are. Um, there was the golf game, remember that? Uh, everyone knew that Donald Trump is no good at golf and he cheats. But as he he had to make sure no one was asked, no one asked the question, hey, is Donald Trump good at golf? He goes, I shall make sure you guys know Donald Trump, he's the best. Uh, I mean, no one could beat uh -huh. him. I mean, we're really good, but uh, he's the best. So if that's his approach, even for a golf game, I think it all matches up that he's willing to do anything he can for Trump, even when it comes to this call with Raffensperger to find a more favorable outcome for Trump. They want people to believe that these multiple, multiple people within the close connection to Donald Trump all had separate reasons for trying to challenge the election results and not because they were following behind what Donald Trump told them to do, which we've also seen in the video. He leans on people. It's a yeah. part of a, of a pattern. He leaned on Raffensperger. And if all of them saying the same things, but they weren't coordinating and talking, this is a whole new level of just like ESP and they can just get the same thought processes without even speaking to each other or yeah. they're all a part of it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I hope they take it seriously. It's this just, there's so many of these crimes that are committed literally a couple of years ago at this point and we're just waiting for something to be done. Anyway, with that Wait said, can we can we end the uh, the hour and the podcast with uh, a little bit of kind of good news or at least funny ironic news? Mm. Let's start off with this video. And then I would move the House Article 22, Sections 1, 3 through 9, and 11 as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> that doesn't legalize marijuana. We just didn't do that, did we? Okay. Oh, are you kidding? Of course you have, oh. no. It's all in the fine Just kidding. Thing. Okay. Just kidding. Next, we'll do that next, okay? <laughs> but they can't do it next because no, they already did. That, that's <laughs> what they did. They effectively, in limited ways, legalized marijuana because uh, that guy and other Republicans did what basically all Americans do, not read. <laughs> Given the opportunity, <laughs> reading is fundamental, it turns out, including in legislation. As a result of what you just saw being discussed, Minnesotans who are 21 or older can start buying edibles and beverages that contain THC, the ingredient, ingredient in cannabis that gets you high. Thank you, Minnesota Star Tribune, <laughs> under a new state law that takes effect Friday. And they, they try to be a little bit needlessly fair, saying, it's unclear if leaders of the Republican controlled Minnesota Senate fully realized the law would legalize Delta 9 THC edibles before they agreed to pass it. Senator Michelle Benson said she knew it would, but did not discuss that specifically with the Republican Senate Majority Leader. And they have quotes from uh, other Democrats saying that we didn't think it would really help to be very clear about exactly what it does, but they counted on the fact, I guess, that the Republicans wouldn't read clearly. Anyway, how does this really work? Well, Apparently, some believe that they didn't realize the new law would legalize edibles containing Delta 9 THC. They thought it would only regulate Delta 8. And as we all know, 
The difference between those is that delta eight has a double bond on the eighth carbon atom. Delta nine <laughs> is a double bond on the ninth carbon atom, as everybody knows. Duh. And one is more potent because of the carbon atoms. But that is actually what it means in practice. And now the Republicans want them to like roll it back. No, <laughs> get out of here. They're gonna be rolling Strip, something else. Stop stripping away people's rights, and maybe we'll give you a take back sees on the edibles. But no. Did you notice that the fire and fervor that these folks fight against uh, legalization of marijuana across the country, um, and how it's gonna kill people? Oh my God, we got more uh, mm -hmm. mass shooters because we heard Laura Ingram and, and Tucker Carlson saying, constantly saying. But you know, in that whole video that we just watched of when they accidentally legalized it to a degree, um, they weren't. Their hair wasn't on fire. Then we're going, oh my God, we've just destroyed our entire state. We, we've just allowed some small form of THC to be ingested by people who are adults and do what the hell they want with their lives. Oh my mm -hmm. God, it's gonna be the end of Christianity in the country as we know it. They didn't say any of that stuff. They chuckled and said, oh, maybe we did. <laughs> oh, my bad. Oh, we'll get it next time. <laughs> you know why? Because it's not that actually important to them. When it's them being themselves, when it's not them doing rehearsed lines about how moral they are and how the Democrats are the druggy party. You just accidentally passed some druggy legislation. Are you now <laughs> evil? No, they laughed about it. It just shows they don't actually care. It's all political positioning. It's all it is. And it's, yeah. and it's the same with abortion rights and all the rest of that stuff. Exactly. It's political positioning. Yeah, 100%. Um, and by the way, who cares? Honestly, like they it don't. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, I mean they don't. They don't care, but they also they shouldn't care. Like, the, yeah, it is insane in any context to care this much about something as benign as weed. It is not. I am not going to tell you that if lots and lots of people started smoking or consuming marijuana in one form or another that nothing bad would happen. What I'm gonna tell you is that they're already doing that and it doesn't <laughs> matter in literally any way. People smoke everywhere, legal, not legal, it doesn't matter. It's ubiquitous, they already do it. But it is an added layer of like, come on, seriously in American politics, that we're being told if you even propose that really young guys have to wait a few years to buy weapons of war, you're insane, but you definitely shouldn't be able to consume marijuana. You could get as much as drunk on vodka as you could. You could buy like 10 gallons of vodka, you could pour it over your head, you could bathe in it, you could do whatever you want, but a little bit of an edible, too dangerous. You can't be trusted with it, seriously. <laughs> but a lot of Republicans accept that. And no rational sane person accepts those two arguments coming at them simultaneously, but many Republicans do. Anyway, unfortunately, it looks like that's all the time we have for our first hour. So thank you everyone on the linear platforms or on the podcast for watching. If you're watching the full show though on Twitch, YouTube, the members app, all that, we do have a lot more to talk about. So don't go anywhere. Jared Jackson and I will take a short break, but we'll be back after this. Angie Baby says, I had to waive my right to carry a gun when I got my medical card in Florida because weed is the problem here and old people believe it. Yeah, you know what people who smoke weed do a lot of? Uh, getting really violent. That's what they do. <laughs> That's how weed works. <sighs> anyway, uh, Brian Fidesz, he's been a member for 17 months. Says, lucky 13 months, glad I could be on for this big news Wednesday. We're glad to have you here. Potato, I love the name, says, watching that Tucker clip and I feel brain cells dying, make his madness make sense. I mean, I think it makes sense from a certain sick point of view. If I wanted to stop all progress and if I wanted to make sure the taxes never went up, if I had won and wanted to stay winning, I would delude people in this way. There's always going to be fascism to be a knee jerk response to the world, even theoretically getting better at some point. And this is the form it takes right now. Gabby says, okay, so John is on record stating his hatred for music, sports, and now fireworks. Does he also hate sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows? I do think that lollipops are among the worst candies. <laughs> the amount of effort that you're expected to put in for a lollipop, that's not worth it. And it can still cut uh, the roof of your mouth. That's true. Sunshine's okay, but like sometimes a bit much. When I was in Tennessee, the sun was is a bit much. Can we plant some trees, please. You know what's underrated? Shade. <laughs> Shade is underrated. Anyway, Mickey C says, the city of Northern Italy has banned fireworks that make noise. They still have colorful displays, but no bang. Yeah, well, a lot of people do those drone shows now. That's a little bit safer, maybe.
Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.